or a little deeper into game number two. These players have a pretty cluttered battlefield. So as we zoom in here, we'll get a good look at it as it looks like Archangel Avison has been cast. Andrew Jessup is transforming his Archangel Avison. He'll redirect the damage over to Nyssa. But Archangel Avison on Alex Han's side was cast in response to Archangel Avison flipping on Andrew's side to prevent creatures from dying. Super easy to understand stuff. Oh, yeah. Can you say Archangel Avison one more time in that <laughs> series of... Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, Nyssa, that's a different card. That's transforming now. Yep, Nissa into Nissa when there's a Nissa on the board. Uh, absolutely. Yep. Pretty easy stuff. Makes perfect sense. Starts on three counters. We'll see where it goes. It looks like it's going to go up. Alex will take a look at the top card. It's a Gideon. That'll go to his hand. Perfect. And we see there's already an evolutionary leap on the battlefield. No. One of the reasons that card's so good in this deck is because it doesn't play a lot of chaff creatures. Yeah. Just plays so, a lot of good ones. So it's, it's Hangerback Walker, Sylvan Advocate, and Archangel Avison. Yeah. So you know you're going to find one of these cards. When the game goes long, the Sylvan Advocates get huge, and they're super efficient. So that's great. If you flip into a Hangerback Walker, you just put some counters on it, sack it to the, the Evolutionary Leap, and keep going. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. Also, it just gives you a way to transform Archangel Avison on Will, mm -hmm. which is also a really nice thing. And it just you know makes creature removal horrific. Yes. A lot of bonuses. Evolutionary Leap's not a card you play four copies of, obviously. No. It's a card you play one or two copies of, but if you do draw it, typically in this deck it will be effective. So for Andrew Jessup, as you can see, he's currently up a game, but it looks like he's in trouble this game. And Allison, the Purifier looks like it's going to be attacking. So this is interesting. They're all going at Nyssa. And Alex has the option here to try to make some trades or just chump block and sacrifice creatures to the evolutionary mm -hmm. leap. Which I think is what's going to happen. So he'll sacrifice a Thopter, take a look at the top couple of cards. Hang your back, Walker, going to go to the grip. Okay, he only has one green source at his disposal right yeah. now. For Jessup, it's a forest. And just a passing of the turn. Not a lot going on. That Hangerback Walker was such a good card to hit. It's rarely bad. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Alex Hans Avison transformed and dealt three damage but didn't kill anything. Yep. Because Jessup's creatures are just so large right now. Rarely do you see Avison transform into Avison the Purifier and have it have virtually no impact. And that's what we just saw there. Now for Alex Hans, you can see his hand. Oh, that main deck Tragic Arrogance. Yeah. Oh, well, we're in game two, but nonetheless, it's very good right here. Andrew Jessup's going to lose a lot of stuff. It's interesting, right? We talked about this in the last match where you watched the Green White Tokens mirror uh, with Matt Biamonte involved mm -hmm. against Peter Ingram. Tragic Arrogance would have been horrible Yeah. for Biamonte. Here, Tragic Arrogance is actually quite good for Alex Hahn. Jessup is left with an Oath of Nyssa and a Sylvan Advocate. Alex Hahn is left with an Evolutionary Leap, a Nyssa... Sage Animus, and Avis in the Purifier, so a world of difference. And it looks like, yeah, Nissa's just made I Aisha? What, what's the, the token's name here? You nailed it. All right. I'm actually very impressed. Well done. We'll take a look at Nate, Nissa, Sage Animus. Makes a 4-4. Four, four. Not as good as the Claire token that was made. All right, maybe it's a little bit better. Maybe. If we head back Jessup's way. Looks like the Advocate might come across here. Yeah, it's going to go after the Nyssa. We'll see if Alex wants to... Oh, he's just going to put the little guy in front. He had the option to, to double block there. It's a Shia. A Shia. Mm. It's okay. It's all right. We let it go. I apologize. The follow-up here... There's another Sylvan Advocate. Looks like there was a morph there from Jessup, which is almost certainly a Den Protector. Maybe a basic land. Yeah. <laughs> we won't know. We, we will never know. In, until later. Yeah. Could be a hidden Dragon Slayer, but that is unlikely, to say the least. <laughs> I wonder if hidden Dragon Slayer is good in the mirror. I think it's just not consistently good enough. Just doesn't kill enough stuff? To, well, it, yeah, there's enough games where 
you you need to deal with a whole bunch of tokens. Um, you know, and it's not going to take down the Ormondal. That's true. So maybe if it exiled, it'd be good enough. Maybe these Nisses are just. Uh, Dude, it's a Nissa party. Yeah, just trading Nissas for Nissas. Yeah. Alex Han is having a having a great time with these Nissas. He's taking this one down, which means everything's going to get a plus one plus one counter. So Shy is a five five. Thopter token is a two two. Avacyn the Purifier is huge. Is this a Gideon emblem now too? Jeez. Yep, cash that in. Make an emblem. Beat downs. Yep. Andrew Jessup's out of here. He'll concede pretty quick. The morph it was a Den Protector. Den Protector. Believe it or not, it was. As Alex Han's going to tie things up here against Andrew Jessup. Green White Tokens Mirror going to game three. For all of our wonderful viewers out there, I hope you're used to this because this is going to happen a lot this weekend. I'm ready for it, you know? I think I actually think the Green White Mirror is really interesting. There's a lot of play to it. Yes. The games go back and forth a lot. Uh, they're very swingy. Uh, you know, like, I, I think... A great way to describe it is just how good and bad tragic arrogance can be. Yeah. I think that defines just what the mirror looks like. The games just look different every time. If the games look the same every time, then tragic arrogance would be insane every time. Or but because the games look different every yeah. time, tragic arrogance can be the best card you could possibly have or a textless card you'd never want to draw. Yeah. I think it's really interesting as both these players are going to go back to their sideboard for game number three because things certainly do change when you're on the play and the draw. So we'll start with Jessup and his two Lamb Holt Pacifist, a Den Protector, two Nissa Vastwood Sears, Linval the Preserver, two Declaration of Stone, two Snakes of Snare, three Planner Outburst, two Secure the Way. So if you're on the play, you know, do you want Wrath Effects? Do you want to try to be more aggressive? What do you think you would want to do if you were here? Uh, I, I think the this deck in the mirror that the games are generally going to go long and you're going to want some of these more powerful spells. Um, the certain cards like um, sorry uh, the, the, the green white instant Jermoka Spin. Jermoka, uh, thank you. Yeah. Cards like that are, are not going to be super strong a lot of the time so you're going to have those coming out of the deck um, maybe some of the other clunkier cards might come out of the deck and you, you're going to want to bring in a lot of these control cards. Stasis Snare is great against the cards that you're most scared of. So the Ormondals, the Archangel Abyssins, potentially Lin Linvala. Um, so you want a card like Stasis Snare. Declaration Stone is great against all the tokens. Uh, the Planar Outbursts just seem really strong. So I, I would be in favor of bringing in a lot of these cards. Yeah, you see Alex Hans working with very similar options. He does have a copy of Clip Wings in his sideboard, but both these players, and I think most of our Green White Token players, will be working with a lot of the same 75 cards throughout their deck yeah. list. It, you know, if, if they'll be in the main deck and the sideboard, that will be different depending on how they've constructed their deck, but they're going to be working with a lot of the same stuff. And one of the things that is difficult is because all of these cards could be good in different scenarios. Yeah. So it, it's kind of this balancing act. How many of these cards do you want to bring in? If the game's going to go long, Den Protector, Nissa, Vastwood Seer, all these cards are good, but you have to cut cards from your deck. Yeah. You don't want to submit 75. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, as these players do get ready here for game number three, we're not talking 75 card formats. We're talking 40 card formats. We're talking about the pre-release for Eldritch Moon. Dude, what's more exciting than a new set? Nothing. Nothing. That's why Magic is still great. Yes. And will always be great is because four or five times a year we get a new set. And the pre-release for this one, July 16th and 17th, which is like a month away, but it'll be here really soon. Yeah, pretty soon we're going to start having uh, the spoilers come out. Which is the best. And that's when the hype starts to build. Best time of the year. Now, with this, we've changed how we do pre-releases. Before, you could only get the sweet pre-release playmat at the Star City Games. Uh, pre-release. But now, we've actually opened this up to other stores. So, limited edition playmat available at participating stores. You can find out which ones are participating at go.starcitygames.com slash pre-release. The name of the playmat, Eldritch Groove, featuring Lily Lama, Lily Lama Vess. I'm going to have to practice that one a little bit more. That's some sweet artwork on that bad boy. Yeah, we got some pretty talented people there all in Roanoke, Virginia. I drew that, actually. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it was all me. <laughs> <laughs> I, put, I put pen to pad and I put that together real quick. Five minutes here. time. It's on my lunch break. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know how it is. All right, Alex Han looks like he's going to take a mulligan here. So, we'll take a little bit of time to learn a little bit more about Andrew Jessup, who, unfortunately for him, the only member of his team without a open title, and they let him know about it quite a bit. Wow. Yep. That's, I mean, I don't like to grind on people, <laughs> but there, there's some zeros there on that. I know. He's got four open top face. He's lost in the finals three times. 
most recently in the finals of SCG Indy to his teammate, Peter Ingram. Yeah, I mean, if he just played a little better, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the finals match, he played really good. He just couldn't come across the finish yeah, line. Yeah, obviously I'm joking. Yeah, it's unfortunate for him. Uh, but you see here, brother with Danny Jessup. Used to play competitive baseball before an injury, and he's a hip-hop fanatic. And a fairly good drummer as well is Andrew Jessup. So you see a member of Team Gurus.com here looking to get the W against a pretty formidable player in Alex Hahn. We see him quite a bit more in the south yeah. here on the SCG Tour. Alex has played in some Pro Tours. You actually see the Pro Tour Match Origin shirt that he's wearing as we're underway here in game. Number three in Othanissa is where Andrew Jessup will start. Forrest is what he will take. And away we go, over to Alex Hong. Yeah, Alex isn't hiding his accomplishments. Shows up with a t-shirt, lets people know he means business. I can play a little magic. Yeah. And he's playing green-white tokens. He's playing a good deck. There's Fortified Village. Reveal Forest, here's Hanger Back Walker for one. Pass it over to Han. Plains the draw. This is an evolutionary leap. Over to Jessup. Yeah, that leap looked so good in game two. We'll see if, if, you know, as long as this game doesn't get too out of control here, it could be really strong again. Sylvan Advocate, activate Hanger Back Walker right away, pass the turn back. You know, a lot of the times you see players maybe wait to activate the Hanger Back Walker. You're going to activate it anyway. You might as well just get it done with. Yeah, don't want to risk it. Yeah. Foundry of the Councils here for Han, and now there's a Declaration in Stone. Bye-bye, Hangerback Walker, oncoming clue. Pass the turn back. Now for Jessup, big turn here. Does he have the turn for Gideon? Fortified Village, the draw. Still an advocate is where he'll start. Han will fall down to 18. The follow-up. Nissa, Vast with Seer. Play Fortified Village. Reveal the force that he'll get from Nissa, shortcutting a little bit. Yep. And simply pass the turn back over to Alex Hong. Hong with the basic forest for his draw. And you can appreciate that, Andrew. You know, he took a little time to make his decision, but once he's made it, plays quickly. He'll, he'll take that shortcut. Uh, he understands that these matches can go, run real long, even though they're Lots of time in game three here. I mean, things could get clogged up, to say the yes. least. Yeah, th things can get bogged down real quick. Gideon, Knight Ally, pass the turn back. Does Jessup have a removal spell to, be able to maybe be able to go after that Gideon? Picked up a copy of Canopy Vista. Well, it looks like he has his own leap and an angel in his hand here. Yep. Declaration in stone takes care of the token. The creatures will take care of the Gideon. There's a forest. It's time for a leap. That's a good turn. Yeah. It's a good turn. Maintains his control of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no clue there for Alton. It was a token. <laughs> no, no. So we head back Han's way. It's behind on the board here. It's not so much, you know, in a situation like this where his life total is under duress. It's just, you know, Jessup's starting to build an advantage. Yeah, what, what Jessup is doing might just become overwhelming too quick. And Jessup will draw. There's Canopy Vista. That's line number six. See the hand, Archangel Avison over there. Sylvan Advocate's a 4 or 5, so it's safe for that one to attack. The no attack there from the Nissa, very smart. Don't want to run face first into an, into an Archangel Avacyn. Yeah, when your opponent goes to turn 5, 5th land, past the turn. They just don't have anything. Yeah, they, they, they probably just don't have anything. Yeah, just bad, that, bad, bad draw, bad luck. That's the time to get greedy and just get the <laughs> extra two points in. <laughs> Archangel Avacyn comes down, indestructible, it'll block Sylvan Advocate. Look, man, I need those two extra points. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Try to sneak them in. For Han, a Westville Abbey. A 
Here's an attack for four in the air. All right, he's going to get greedy. A little bit. Well, he has the leap. It, it, if things go wrong, he can cash in his creature to the evolutionary leap. But I think that angel's pretty important right now. He's got two. Yeah, Jessup says, I'm going to play my Archangel Avacyn. Yeah, well, and same thing on his side. He, he's saying, I'll, I'll kind of call your bluff here. I have my own leap. If things go wrong, mm -hmm. I can cash in my guy to the leap. So indestructible trigger. And then I think we'll see some blocking here in just a moment. Yep, but Alex Hahn, as he reaches for a forest. Yep, there's your block. Yep. He'll sacrifice his Archangel Avacyn to Evolutionary Leap. So, Hangerback Walker is what he'll find. This may have all been part of the plan, though. Well, that seems good, but he's fallen behind. A Andrew Jessup's board is starting to get really strong. And with that leap on the board, it's... It's only going to get better. Now, here's Tragic Arrogance. So, this is interesting. Which creature do you want to let Andrew Jessup keep? Do you let him keep the Advocate? Well, this is, I would have assumed that Andrew would keep both four power creatures on the board for maximum impact. I guess he can sack one Evolutionary and leave. Yes, exactly. And then let, and then let Alex decide which one he gets to keep? Yeah, and initially it looked like he was going to make Alex choose between Nyssa and the Angel. But it, it, he's thought about it again, and it looks like... Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure he knows which creature he wants to sacrifice. He's going to sacrifice Nyssa. All right, there's a Den Protector. So he gets to rebuild really quickly here from the Tragic Arrogance. Yeah. But he does get to get the leap off the board, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Yeah. It's funny because the, the Oath of Nyssas are usually insurance. Yeah, they're bad. They're, they're against commands. Yeah, it's and bad it, that they're here now. And, yeah, against Tragic Arrogance, they're actually a liability. Yeah. So that was one of those spots where Tragic Arrogance was like a C? I think it's better than a C. You think it's better than a C? Okay. You know, if Alex has another Wrath-ish effect, getting the, uh, getting the leap off the board is just so big. Okay. Here comes Advocate for four. And, he, he, you know, he still has plenty of life total. We know he has the hanger back in his hand, so he can activate that evolutionary leap a bunch of times. Assuming he's got the time to work with. Yes. There's Dead Protector face down past the turn back. Han will draw. Didn't get a great look at it. He's tapping mana fast, though. Okay. There's Linvala. Linvala, that was a good one. Oh, yeah. Linvala is good a lot. So up to 19, I believe, goes Alex Han. And eight power worth of flying. These matchups are so bonkers, Cedric. Yes. I, I always think I know what's going on. And then a few turns later, I'm just like, this is not how I thought this was going to go. Yeah. yeah I, thought that, I thought that we might see Den Protector return Archangel Avacyn, Revolutionary yeah. Leap. Now it's got to get Declaration Stone. Things have changed. Got to get Linvala out of here, probably. Well, and it looked like Alex might, was just going to get his doors blown off. And yep. then a few turns later, it looks like Alex has a very legitimate shot to win the game. And then a few turns later, maybe he doesn't have the shot to win. The, you know, it's just kind of crazy. There's Deccan Stone. A clue token on the way. Dead Protector will attack along with the Sylvan Advocate. The Angel wants to block the Dead Protector. And Andrew's taking a good long think here because he has He's another, have Avacyn, another right? Archangel Avacyn in his hand. Yep. Looks like he wants to keep Den Protector around. This is risky. This is a little bit greedy. If his opponent has another Wrath effect. Planner Outburst, Tragic Gear against any of them? Yeah. Yep. Han will untap and draw very quickly. Looks like it might be another Linvala. Yeah, it does look like another Linvala. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Yep. All right, 20 all. Right back to where we started. Yeah. Land that big Linvala just stonewalls the opposing team. Linvala is the nuts. It's so good. This looks like it might be an Oath of Nyssa. It is. Lose one. 
trigger. Jamoka's command, Sylvan Advocate, planes. Take a Sylvan Advocate. I'm a little surprised to see that Jermokas command still in Jessup's deck. Don't like it after sideboard? It's tough. It, it, like I was saying, it's just another card that's sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not. There's just so much competition for which cards you're going to play in the deck. Here's Nessa ticking down. You know, it's not going to be able to get rid of Evolutionary Leap a lot of the time because of an opposing Oath of Nessa. One thing that's interesting now, as Jessup is attacking with all these creatures, is before, Linvala was best creature on the battlefield. But yep. I think a lot of the time we're going to see something like this with Nissan getting in the deck. To be able to make creatures that are better than Linvala is not particularly hard. Archangel Evans is a 5-5 now. Sylvan Advocate is a 5-6. Den Protector is a 4-power creature only right now. So it looks like Linvala is going to trade with Archangel Evans. Sylvan Advocate will come across for 5 Alex will fall down to 15. Who's winning, Craig? Two mana, five, six. <laughs> I, the creatures are so good right now. I actually just don't know who's winning this game. Like, I think Andrew Jessup is winning. He has two five sixes and a four three den protector and a Nissa. Yeah. His board looks much more commanding. But it could change so quick. <laughs> yeah. We know that Alex still has that hangerback walker. Yep. Here's Oath of Nyssa. Take a look. He found a Nyssa Vastwood Seer. And it looks like a couple of lands. So Nyssa Vastwood Seer is the selection. Yeah, I think he's starting to get into a position where he's got to deploy this hangar back walker. Mm -hmm. You know, and make some chump blocks and, and, and cash it in. Do some work with Leap. Yeah. Well, and if, if he finds more hanger back walkers, all of those tokens can turn into a demon at some point. Yeah, that's very true. You know, it, there's not a lot that's bigger than a demon. No, Ormondal can catch Han up. Because I, I think that Alex is behind right now. Yeah. It's unclear how far behind he is, but I feel like he's behind in this game. Going to finish off Nissa with the 3-3 Angel from Linvala. I think he's going towards Nissa Vastwood's here now. <laughs> Got to cast it first. There you go. Now you get to search up a forest. Assuming you have one left in your deck. There you go. Play a land. Transformation will be complete. And then perhaps it's just hanging back on two. Yeah. Maybe your Nissa just makes them 4 4 a Shia. Yeah, the 4 4 can trade with a Den Protector. Yeah. Or it can, it can gang up with a 2 2 hanger back walker yep. to, to take down one of these advocates. A Shia's on the way. And. It is kind of interesting if you're supposed to hang her back for one or two. I think he's only going to go for one. Yeah. He's going to go for one. He's got so much mana. He, he needs to start using this evolutionary leap uh, to find some impactful cards to. Like, I, think he, I think he's incentivized to want to leave mana up for a leap, maybe crack the clue. Yeah. And something like that, as opposed to just playing hanger back walker for two. It's a tough spot, though. Yeah, th this is kind of crazy how swingy these games are. If you're an expert in the mirror, this is a really good turn to be playing in, I think. Yes. If you're you or me, <laughs> yeah. show up with a different deck. I'd be playing white black. Yeah, this yeah. is like. <laughs> For better or worse, I'd still be playing white black control. All right, here come those guys. Sylvan Advocates come in. Now there's Nissa. Yeah, I don't think he's made his attack yet. I don't think so either. I think he was thinking about it. Yep. This is going to go up to four, so that means we'll be seeing the top card here. Are there enough permanents on the board right now? Oh, we can get more. 
Look, this isn't like what we saw at Grand Prix Miami. Green white devotion mirror. Oh. So I got no problem with this. Though it does always seem to be green white related. Yeah, someone will win these games. Yeah, it's always green white related when we see this nonsense happen. I think advocates are coming in, I think. <laughs> Jessup thinks they are too. He's, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's not 100% sure. He's not positive. I think Alex thinks they're coming in now too. So it looks like maybe time for some blocking. I would guess that they're going after the Nissa. Am I going after Alex? Forget Nissa. Andrew Jessup's trying to get Alex on dead. Start by sacrificing a clue, get a little more information. Yeah, he took 10. He falls down to 5. I'm a little surprised. Um, I guess he's just thinking he'll get a lot more value out of the hanger back walker by putting a counter on it and then sacking it. Nissa going up, hanger back walker. There's a the planes, that's land for turn for Alex Hahn. And another consideration with it, if Alex had chump blocked with his hanger back walker and cashed it into the evolutionary leaf, he'd have an additional 1-1 one, one flyer on the board right now, and the angel and the thopter could go after the opposing planeswalker. That's very true. As it stands right now, he can only knock it down to one. Yeah. yeah. We think. Does Andrew just have... Like a, does he have like an Archangel Abyss in here? He's really thinking about this. Yeah. Maybe a Carla Jermoka's command in hand. Okay. <laughs> Another Angel. This is kind of another greedy play out of Andrew. He, he played right into the teeth of a tragic arrogance mm -hmm. earlier, and he's, he's doing it again. Sacrifice evolutionary leap. There goes the tragic arrogance. Stacy snare as well. A couple of lands. Hanger back walker. Now Alex Hunt has three of those in his hand. Huh. Den protector. Looks like it's going face down. Maybe. Yep. All right. I'm curious to see if Alex Han makes it through this turn. There's another hanger back walker. That's for one. Pass the turn back. Okay. Yeah, that was not Jessup's hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Over to Andrew. Start by ticking Nissa up. Find Oath of Nissa. Some redraws. Yeah. A very Nissa centric game here. Nissa centric deck. One, two, three. Gideon, maybe the best? And you see the way he's moving around now. It looks like he's trying to figure out his Gideon lethal. Oh, I can't imagine it is. Um, you know, Alex has four creatures on the board. And he, he can go up to five, no problem, by ticking up a walker and then sacrificing it. But if he does that, the Den Protector now has five oh, power. Oh, the Den Protector, I, sure. I think yep. that's the biggest issue now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right. Yeah, so now all these creatures are going to attack Alex Han. And I think that's the fact that the Den Protector has five power now that may have screwed things up for him here. Because I think the hope was I get to play another turn, yeah. get back Tragic Arrogance mm -hmm. with my Den Protector, and clear up this battlefield a little bit and, and kind of just reset the game. Well, he, he resets the game with a whole bunch of creatures in his hand because of the evolutionary league. Yeah. And now I'm not sure he's going to get the opportunity to do that because this Den Protector and that relevant text about the inability to block yep. is going to win Andrew Jessup this game. So Andrew Jessup is going to win this match here over Alex Hahn. Two games to one. Whew. Another Green-White's token mirror. Another very complicated game. 
but a win here for Andrew Jessup. And as we said earlier, not the first time, won't be the last time. The games are swingy, they're fun, and yeah. we're going to see a lot of them.